Better Late Than Never, we have our top 20 albums of 2019. It's been written on the site um, for two weeks, two odd weeks, since the end of 2019. Years. Yeah, it feels like I've already done it. it Jesus does. Christ, it, it does already. Um, but yeah, of course, we wanted to do it as a YouTube video as well, alongside the top 10 EPs and the top 10 live show videos that we already have up. 20 albums each, my top 20, your top 20. Um, yeah, let's get started, really. really. Then I guess you, uh, you'll you go first. Okay. Yeah. Number can 20 see cover of yours. <laughs> yeah, I put covers in my, my, my Word document because I'm cool like that. Very um, cool. My, my number 20th was Alcest Spiritual Instinct, mm -hmm. which came out in October. Um, it wasn't something I thought I'd like originally because it was it's not um you know straight up kind of metal. It's quite thinking metal. I think I kind of thought about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you know, I like quite, that. It's quite like a, emotional and brooding and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was a fucking great album. Very good. You're not wrong, actually. Yeah, this is the sort of the album. If if someone was who knew our tastes were to get it and go, which one of you is going to like this more? They're yeah, likely going to go to me. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I will. Yeah, Alsace is a mind further along. Uh, my number 20, it Swallowed a Sun by Obey. It was released on April 5th, 2019. Showcased an impressive array of talent and imagination. The power of rock-infused doom. Uh, smashing boundaries and leaving a listener in uh oh. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Um, next up for me was Forevermore by Control, Control the Storm. Control the Storm. Uh, one of many bands, really, that came to light to me this year. Mm. I think, and these are up there with some of the best ones. Um, July 25th release. Full of Bloodstock, which kind of, I think... Uh, I think sometimes that helps, doesn't it? It kind of rammed home that these are good. You know, we, yeah. were, we were doing interviews for most of it, but I caught like the last track and they That's really it. brought it and it was like, yeah, this these, this band's solid, man. Yeah, I didn't yeah, I didn't get to see any of it, but I can't remember what I was doing because you uh, went. You were putting the equipment back. Equipment back. And I dashed over there to catch the, catch the last track. That's it, that's it, yeah. All right, my number 19, it is Unalterable by Mist of Misery, released on April 12th. Um, it's, so Mist of Misery, uh, I've got a great history with this band. They have, before this album, they'd done two EPs and both of those EPs got 10 out of 10. They're one of the best black metal bands out there, one of the most emotionally draining. And Unalterable continues that incredible dominance. Uh, symphonic black metal, DSBM, classical music elements. It's fucking amazing. Number 19. 19, uh, number 18. Winter Saga by Windrose. Oh, wow. You put so, this in there. Okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah. The Italian power folk matter. So it came out, I don't know, uh, 27th of September. Mm. I have quite a lot of mine. I, I know it's come out the back end of the year. Or, or like, I have plenty that came out early in the year as well. Don't get me wrong. But I was surprised how many of them came out in the last few months and then have, I've given them loads of playtime and got... I know it's down with our EPs as well. Yeah. That there was quite... There was, at you least wonder, half of them were... You wonder if it's because, like, they're so fresh in your mind sometimes. And yeah. You know, but, but anyway, I mean, I really, really enjoyed the Windrose album. I find them sometimes a bit hit and miss across their other albums. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually avoided this album for a long, long time because of all the mockery of Diggy Diggy Hole. Yeah, of course. And I, I never listened to that song. And do you know what? It's a fucking banger. <laughs> it is absolutely brilliant. But there's so much better songs in it, man. But um, yeah, it's, it's really, really strong. Probably the strongest album I've listened to. Of Windrose? Yeah. I, I haven't got enough of their history on me to be able to say that, but I do like this album. Like, I don't think it's a bad album. 18, for me, is Mass Worship, self-titled, uh, released on 8, October 18th, 2019. It's the spirit of old school death metal, uh, Death Crust. And uh, it's just a really raging, powerful, heavy-ass, brutal release. Uh, big fan of this album. Really, really took me by surprise. Awesome band, live as well. Cool. Uh, my number 17 is The Root of All Evil by Spite. Oh, wow. Um, this is a bit different to all the ones that I had previously. It's probably the first one that you come to in my list. It's like not power or not not a bit different or proggy mm. or anything like that it's like real real fucking heavy deathcore stuff man um just really really strong really really heavy it's got lots going on to it like it's just like you know you, you kind of feel a bit pummeled after you listen to it i love stuff but when like you that. listen back to it again and you start picking out little yeah i don't know like a little drum beat that you didn't maybe quite catch the first time around and you start realizing it's not just a straight up assault you start picking out oh, like a little layer here and there and you go fuck me it's clever I love stuff like that yeah, yeah I mean that the more one... you listen to it the more you get out of it you know that sort of stuff yeah 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 I mean I, I'm a I'm big fan of that whole pummeling thing and then that layer yeah. thing you find yeah alright my number 17 you're probably going to be uh, outraged this is this is as low as it is <laughs> Uh, Rotten Christ the Heretics Outrage <laughs> Outrage uh, Released on February 15th 2019 It's one of the most intense experiences you'll hear all year It's Powerhouse of Black and Death Metal um, It's an incredible album I just uh, Yeah I just think it was better Unfortunately At least personally But yeah, yeah. It's like like it, We should have said this at the start So I'll add it now 
the bar between these fucking albums, there is no, there's, there, it's minuscule. Yeah. Like, it's minuscule stuff. Even even worse when we get down to, like, the top five what or you six. Think, like, uh, I don't know, like, I, I'm just pick, plucking a number out of here. Like, on average, probably listen to, I don't know, a thousand albums this year. Easily. And these are the top 20 of those thousand. It's mm-hmm. not like the 20th is the worst one we've listened to this year. It's the top 20 out of a thousand. It's, yep. It's, yeah, it's, they're, they're high scorers, man. Yeah, uh, in fact, um, because it's only the 20 we're doing, I'm pretty sure that nothing on this, on mine at least, oh, no, that's not true. Majority of this will not have scored less than 9.5 out of 10 and when we reviewed it on the site. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, I've got one where I reviewed, I, and I actually reviewed it, where I reviewed it and I gave it eight. Right. And then as the months went by, I got more, more and more into it. But, you know, my first impression was love half of it, wasn't keen on half of it. Right. My ending impression of it was love, love, love 95% all. of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And of course, that we don't go back and change scores. And that was Windrose. So. Oh, okay, there we go. Cool, right. You're, uh, I did uh, yeah. 17, so you're 17. So, uh, my 16. Oh, yeah, go uh, on. My yeah. number 16, which you might be outraged that this is so low down on my list, which is um, The Silver Ghost by Child Rain. Which outraged. I, I, <laughs> outraged. <laughs> Twenty uh, ninth of March release, and I you, you you were the big kind of selling point on this one, and you pushed them quite hard. And I do really really like the album; it's very very strong. I, I wouldn't I'd be lying if I said I like it as much as you do. Mm-hmm. There are moments in it that I find a little bit. I don't think there's a bad song on the album. I think every now and then there are songs where I think like, you know, that doesn't quite hit the heights of this one or you yeah. know, that sort of thing. But really 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 strong album. And um, I, I have to admit, when I first listened to them, and even after this year, I thought this was their debut album. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they'd been around for quite quite yeah, a while. Yeah, quite a actually, while. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and get a little bit into their back catalogue if I can and see what else I like. Cool. My number 16 is Skyward by Evergreen Refuge, uh, released March 20th, 2019. What's interesting about this is it is just one track long. One track that comes in at over an hour. Over an hour. Fuck me. The epitome of an incredible <laughs> journey built on a foundation of peace, melancholy, atmospheric, black metal, and more. Right. Not quite your... Th- uh, I was going to no. say, not quite... No, I mean, I I don't know. It depends, like, how the hour is. I'm imagining it transitions a lot. Oh, of course, it's yeah. It's not like um, a sludge kind of drone noise for an hour where it's just kind of hitting you. I'd imagine, like, it kind of feels like you're listening to... It's constant highs and lows. Songs or, it might flow as a song, don't get me wrong, but... It, I'm pre- yeah, it, it, it's it's because of the highs and lows and the drops in the melody and the heavier parts and stuff like that. I think it does, yeah. They, live gigs must be boring, though. I, yeah, <laughs> We go. We got thirty minutes. We're just gonna play half of this one song that we got. Yeah, you'd never be able to play a festival, would you? <laughs> no, you, know, you can't really do it. You can't really either. Like you know, some bands will do like an eight-minute track, and then they'll do a radio edit. edit yeah, like four and a half minutes. I you mean, can't really do it. An hour down to four minutes. <laughs> but yeah, um, my number fifteen. Then this, this is my. This, I, took, I spent a lot of time debating this album whether I was even gonna include it, but I felt like I had to. And it's Empath. Oh by wow! Townsend. Now this is a weird thing with this, right? I, I I've kind of feel like this album is a bit of a a kind of a work of art more so sometimes than a work of musical quality. Right. right. Um, I think it's very, very top heavy in the songs that I love. And I find the second half of it, the most bizarre, fascinating, complex listen. Yeah. Um, and to the point where in some songs in it, I know I will probably never play again because mm-hmm. uh, I've heard them once and I don't think they need to be heard more than once. However, I also am very aware that if I ever wanted to, to certain people and I was like, wanted to show them the wackier side of metal that I would stick Empath on and be like, check that shit out. Yep. And they'll be like, what the fuck? Cowbell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, all that. Um, and I just kept thinking about it. And I, you know, the reason I ended up including it in my list, right, for two reasons. One, because if they'd have released this album with only Spirits Will Collide in it, I still would have reviewed it as 10 out of 10. Yep. Um, but secondly, because it just had a huge impact. That's all it, you know, I was thinking about albums that have had a massive impact that I think are quality, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's also got probably the most impactful song of my year. Remembering that prior prior to this album, I would not have said I was a fan of Devin Townsend in any way. Yeah, I think I don't know. I think I agree. You know with you. I mean? so yeah. it's, it's the impact it had on me personally. I was like, I don't, I couldn't feel. I kept trying to find a reason to leave it out, and I was like, I don't see how I can. You know, if that's not a good sign of a great album that I've listened to this year, that I am now a huge fan of him, excited to see him at Bloodstock, my favorite song individually of the year. I mean, that's got to be a good enough reason to put the album in, isn't it? I think it's a fa- I think it's brilliant. I'd back up what you're saying by also saying that uh, it took. I didn't listen to Empath for a while due to busyness, yeah. And it was your uh, pressure that got me to listen to it and go and I'll check out this particular song, song and it, stuff yeah. like that. Which so you know it, it, it did have that impact enough that you 
we've always said it that someone has an album or a song comes along and you kind of pushing and pushing and pushing yeah. some others and that was what you were doing with that yeah I, I, I still am to this day with everyone yeah. anyone will fucking listen <laughs> <laughs> well my number 15 you've already mentioned it's Alces Spiritual Instinct uh, nothing really more to add except that for me it's Haunting and Heavy the manifestation of Alces post sound lifted and carried on wings of black metal black metal yeah uh, my number 14 is The Ties That Bind, Morass of Molasses Ooh. album. Cool. Uh, we're big fans of the band anyway, to be honest. Um, I just It's a really strong album. It uh, is. I think it's a weird thing with this band. I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and it's like I keep forgetting that they're good. <laughs> you know, like um, they'll release a new album, and I'll check it out, and I'll be like, oh, fucking hell, that's, that's fucking amazing. And I'm surprised. And then I'll see them at a gig and I'll be like, fucking hell, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. Like, I need to probably <laughs> stop forgetting that they're really, really good. But I, do, I, I think it's a really strong album, man. I prefer it, actually. I know it was really close to the, I can't remember, the, date, the, the first album. Oh, it ties up mind, and it? Well, yeah. But anyway, I, I prefer this one to it. And, and yeah, good album. Yeah, I mean, considering they were in your top 10 live shows as yeah, well, that probably... Manassas, and this album, I, th- I think you're likely to remember now that they're yeah. good. Hopefully. Yeah, Hopefully, hope so, yeah. yeah. Six months down the line, you're like, fucking that band. Oh, we'll go and check them around some and see what they're like. <laughs> like, did you know how good this band is? <laughs> Uh, number 14, another post-metal one for me. It's Cult of Luna's A Dawn to Fear, released September 20th, 2019. Um, it literally was, uh, embodies everything Cult of Luna fans have come to expect from the post-metalers, expanding their epic, emotive and inventive music to even greater heights. When it comes to Cult of Luna, like, it's one of the, they become the band now where you just know it's going to be good. It's yeah, you just know. I haven't listened to this album. I know you, I've, I've heard you talk about it quite a lot. Mm. So I, I will. I'll definitely plan to. Good. But I haven't. Good. Uh, my number 13 is mm-hmm. Second to None by Dream Troll. Um, 12th of July release. Yep. And just, it's, it's, it's weird to say it's typical Dream Troll because they haven't had that many releases of that, but it, it really is. It's like a wave of nostalgia, yep. but like modernized a little bit, you know. Um, I just find everything that they release, I found Second to None immensely fun to listen to, man. Like just come out of every song with a big smile on my face, mad solos, you know, good kind of fist pumpy yeah. kind of music it's, it's hard not to enjoy it man it's really I, hard not to I think the important thing is Lee, you say you describe, so you describe it to someone who's never heard Dream Toll before exactly like you just did you then put that album on and it it backs it up yeah. you are correct you're not, do, you're not, you're not it's not hyperbole you no, are no, no, yeah. is, listen to that shit and try not to smile yeah. try not to like <laughs> tap your foot or something like that you know right, number 13 Frost Veils Empirical, Imperial Imperial Visions uh, released March 28, 2019, the debut release. It's melancholic and mysterious, a uh, unique brand of eerie, haunting, and deeply emotional black metal. Bit of a theme here with me. Yeah. I like I'm, my emotional I'm, I'm, black metal. I'm surprised how different our um, 20s are so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it really is, actually. Good. Yeah. Shows how much variety there is out there for all you people who think metal's dead. Or yeah. Dead. <laughs> um, so my number 12 is Crystaller, Worldwide ne- Negative. Yep. Um, band I only really came to know this year. To be honest, um, yeah, I'd I, say I, the I, month leading up the Bloodstock. Yeah, yeah, that's really where it started. To be honest, it was bands playing at Bloodstocks, check them out, that yep. sort of thing, and they had a bit of hype around them anyway, didn't they? There was a, there was a bit of talk about them, and uh, yeah, the new album. But they live up to it, man. They really do. That album was uh, either released, I think, the week after Bloodstock, uh, or the same week, sixteenth of August. Right, so it's just after the Bloodstock. So yeah. The, yeah, the hype leading up to that album, and by then I think we'd reviewed it as well, and we yeah, we yeah. saw them, we've seen them again since, and like. Well, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a really, really strong album, man. It's really good. And it's like, for, they're not like technically a newcomer because it's their second album, mm. I think, and it? Not their first. Well, they're not a newcomer for sure. I don't know which yeah. album number it is, but yeah. But it's, it's kind of um, like the one the, that's It's the one them. that's made wave, but for good reason, man. It's like well worth checking out. Cool. Um, probably the latest one I have here then, uh, number 12. It is Officium Tristes, The Death of Gaia, released on December 13th, 2019. Could be black metal. No, it's no? Death and Doom. Oh, heard Gaia. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll yeah. Black metal coming. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it's Death and Doom with uh, an incredible array of melodic wonder mixed with intense heaviness. This one took me by fucking surprise. I'd never even heard of this band. It came via a label who tends to do um, the more extreme side, uh, Transcending Obscurity Records. So yeah. uh, quite a lot of extreme records and stuff like this. So, and I, I, you know, I listen to a lot of their stuff because they, their promos come months in advance. It's really useful. And this one fucking blew me away. Absolutely incredible. That's why it's number 12. And this next one blew me away. Um, and I, it's number 11, The Lord of Shadows by Dark Mirror of Tragedy. Oh God, this, and yeah. Just to prove how 
metal they are. Mm. All the elves are spelled O V. Nothing more so true than that. The Lord of Shadows by Dark Mirror of Tragedy, and um, this this would blew me away. I, I, I listened to this a lot. I was actually listening to it today, strangely enough. Um, it was released back in January, twenty fifth of January, and it is just brilliant, right? The thing that interested me about it originally, the reason I downloaded it, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, so everyone can criticise me. Uh -huh. but I'm pretty sure they're they're Korean, and uh, so it's Korean black metal, right? Uh, but kind of has a symphonic edge. I, I, when I listened to it, do you know what it reminded me originally of? If you go back to kind of Midian Day Cradle, right? Yeah, it's the most Midian Cradle-like sound outside okay. of Cradle I've ever heard. It has the atmospherics. It has the gentle symphony. It's not a full-on symphonic album. It's predominantly black metal with a little orchestral flair, and it's just really fucking good. It's so so strong, man. Twelve months later, I'm still listening to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say it's such and an early release, release as well. well yeah. Time. Okay, my number 11, also a December release, released December 6, 2019, Absurdium Ad Nauseum by Cybernetic Witch Cult. Uh, psychedelic stoner rockiness. It's required listen as far as I'm concerned. This is one of those where this, if I was, if I was doing a top 20 psychedelic fuzz albums of the year, this is number one. Is there 20 of them? Oh God, there's, there's at least 100. <laughs> like Jesus, know. yeah. Yeah, you know, consider what we listen to. Yeah, um, yeah this is the, one of the best releases. It, it actually was originally in the top 10, but because of a, a late later release, I think it got pushed out. Yeah, number 11. So, number 10s. Here we go. My number 10 is The Infernal Pathway by 1349. Yeah. Um, another August one, released 16th of August. Um... Apparently, I didn't know this listening to it. I'll be lying if I said I did. Um, it was like a long wait. It was five years of waiting for the black metalers, Norwegian black metalers to get out. Mm -hmm. um, really, really heavy. Really traditional. Yeah, yeah that's like them, a, isn't it? A, yeah. And I think that's sometimes... Um, I think if you had that every day, it would like maybe you get a bit bored of it. But so much of music now is tinged with something. It's that cross with that and that cross with that. When you do get a nice traditional black metal yeah. album come out and you can hear the roots of it and all that, it's, I, think, I think that's one of the reasons why it blew me away it was just nice to listen to you know this kind of retro sound yeah but not like in terms of how it was mastered and recorded but yeah because it's gonna be high production you, know, you can hear the fucking wind howling through uh forests and all that while you're listening to it yeah yeah no, I agree with you cold. 100%. Yeah. The fucking Norwegian bands always making me cold. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Some of it is just refreshing because yeah. of all this, you know, we, we never, even not all what we're talking constantly here, there's no just like, oh yeah, this is a rock album. It's this or oh, that God, and stuff. Yeah. So that, with 1349, you do just get that old school black metal. Yeah, it's what we do. It's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, my number 10. Ready for my outrage? Go on. Cal Decapitation. Fail. Death Atlas. Outrage. <laughs> you need an outrage button. It was originally number 11. Was so, it? yeah. Uh, but the more I listened to it, the more I kind of I I thought, yeah, it has to be in the top well, ten. Released keep listening. Keep listening. <laughs> released uh, on November 29th, twenty nineteen. Um, I think the biggest thing from this is few would have expected quite what we got here from a band notorious with extreme music. Yeah. There's moving onwards and upwards, and then there's Death Atlas. That's that's how it is for yeah. me. You know. Yeah. No, yeah. I get it. Um. Okay. Number nine. So my number nine is. Soilworks Verk Liason mm. um, released 11th of January so probably the earliest one I think I've got in here I think yeah um, weirdly I would say that this would if you'd asked me this say if I was doing a top 20 in like March it would have probably been in there summer but it probably wouldn't have been in the top 10 yeah the weird thing about this album is, is that as the year's gone on it's grown on me more and more and more and I think mostly that is down to them and some fucking clever marketing. Right. Or maybe down to Nuclear Blast. I don't know. But um, essentially what they did is like at points in the year where you might think it's time for the album to be forgotten, like I think it was June and then October, um, they released an EP yeah. with a couple new tracks or, or a couple re pre different records of it. And each one of them also came with different versions of Verk Light and songs. So every time Soulwork released music this year and I listened to it, I listened to Verk Light and again. And the more that happened, the more I started re remembering. I was like, God, that song's so good. And I was going back to Verk Lighten and listening to it all again. And I found myself, you know, they released an EP in October. I found myself in November listening to Verk Lighten back to back again. Yeah. You know, so I do think it was cleverly played. But it, what it did is it just reminded me all the way up until now that it's a damn good album. There's nothing wrong with having a good marketing roadmap. No, no, um, no. no it's not... But if the end result is just that means you're re-listening to an album that, like, all the way back in January and you've got to listen to new stuff, it's going to get forgotten about. It's not yeah. a bad thing. 
it's, it's good from that. I mean, you know, realistically, if um, somebody's missed the album, they get the EP and they yeah. listen to oh, there's a couple of songs. Oh, they're from the album. Oh, I better go and check go that and check out. it out. You know, yeah, small percentage, but it all matters. Yeah. It all matters. Number nine for me is Gates to the Mornings Return to Earth. It was released on July 19th. It's not a conventional post-Black Mallet album because uh, it go, has as much somber melodies and reflective tempos to hopeful and feel-good sounds. Um, for me, this is the album of the year where if you where it's about making you feel something. Yeah. Cool. What is it you feeling? Oh, just, just you know, the myriad of uplifting, like okay. happy, but sad, like, emotional, like, yeah, hate. just feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even some of because it is a black metal album. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking, yeah, like you're feeling... Church burning coming on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, if so often want to go on a rampage, yeah. then cro- then break down and cry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the soundtrack to that. <laughs> um, so my number eight is Night Rage, Wolf to Man. Of course, um, really, really good album. Um, probably my favourite so far. I think it is the best so far. I, 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 I it definitely feel like um, the, the new team up of Ronnie and Maris and that it seems to be growing album by album. And yeah. You kind of felt with Wolf to Man, it was like. Yeah, you got your sound there. A bit more you, settled, yeah. Yeah, you got it down. Uh, I just think it's a banging album, man. It's really, really good. Melodic death metal. Uh, there's not much else to say other than that. It's just it's a strong, strong release. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Number eight for me is Slow. By Slow. The band is Slow. Um, and it's six, Dante Lion. It was released on November 8th, 2019. And it's Funeral Doom, but not as you know it. Slow. It's slow, create deep, all-consuming atmosphere. And to me, it's a work of art. Uh, I love a bit of Funeral Doom, but it is an acquired occasional thing because Jesus, they can, you know, you get four tracks. Drone. Yeah, four <laughs> tracks that's 50 minutes yeah. long and it's just thing, but slow. And this is not the first album we've reviewed on the site for slow as well. So they've kind of got something going for them. Cool. Uh, number seven, Their Fall by Finster Forst. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've started not checked out this year. Ah, uh, this is brilliant, man. Not a band I was very familiar with before this album, not going to lie, mm. although they've been around for a fair amount of time. Uh, the German blackened folk band. Occasionally folk, occasionally black. There is songs that mix both, but I think like you could argue either camp right. sometimes. like you know, It doesn't have to be blackened folk. You can say they're a black metal band. With, yeah, yeah. And, and occasionally there's some folk things happen, but you can still just be a black metal yeah, band. You don't have to be blackened folk but all that's the time. What um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing. It's a brilliant album. It's probably one of the most accomplished folk metal albums I've ever listened to. Not okay. just this year, but ever listened to. Um, I just think, yeah, it just deserves to be heard, man. It deserves a praise lavished on it. There's some like, like good sort of nine, ten minute long epic sort of songs on it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant album. Number seven? Yeah, number seven. Yeah. Uh, Son of the Dying, The Earth is Silent. It released November 29th. It's a gargantuan release, merging clashing styles with ease, melodic gu- gu- guitar tones, doing battle with horrifying vocals and bleak rhythm. It's such a clash, in fact, that I remember thinking at the time, like, this shouldn't work. But as the album just goes on, it's just like, it's they're such masters of this inane noise that you... So at first it's just like the fuck and then it's like oh, oh wait a minute this is working this is actually rhythm this is actually a beat this is musically like proficient I, I, I'm i the idiot you know <laughs> yeah amazing album cool bet you're glad you haven't got my number six because I'm going to fucking butcher this one um, number six for me then the band is Mystifier uh, the album is Protagoni Mavri Magici Dynastia <laughs> rolls right off the yeah, tongue done it um I, I weird I, again. I wasn't familiar with Mystifier. I'm not gonna lie. So nope. I don't think I was. But I remember when listening to this album when I reviewed it, they were back after a 17 year absence. Oh, this seven! A, wow. So these are an early day black death band. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was blown away by this man. It is genuinely the heaviest album I've listened to this year. I would say like yeah, definitely no, 100 percent definitely it's the heaviest album I've listened to this year. Um, it's pretty vicious to be honest like 90 percent of the way through mm. um it does have layers it does have all that stuff that you can take from it but for the most part it is just an a, a, an angry aggressive blast yeah like 17 years of cobwebs to blow off and they just fucking let it all out on one album yeah 17 years like, of pent up rage man yeah. so yeah i think i said it's a modern black metal masterpiece no that no better word you can describe an album i yeah. think when it has that's what they're going for my number six is Netherbirds Into the Vast Uncharted, a band we are some quite familiar with on the site as well. Released September 27, 2019. It's melodic, blackened, death metal. 
blowing the boundaries, as so many bands do, but Netherbird do it incredibly well. Um, it's deep, brooding, thought-provoking extreme metal. At times, it's utterly chaotic. Um, noise, with all the trimmings you would hope and expect from black metal, but, you know, like many bands that I said already, uh, it's layered with melody and stuff like that, but yeah. Netherbird are, this year at least, 2019, were, I think, top of the game for it, yeah. Cool. Number five, top five. Mm. So, my first, fifth one, and again, this is a cheat, a little bit. Oh, I know you've got, yeah. Um, the Blind Leading the Blind by 1914. Mm. So the reason it's a bit of a cheat is because it was arguably officially released in 2018. Yeah. Initially, before being picked up by everyone and then released again in 2019. Yep. But um, for me, this album came out in 2019. I had no, no awareness of it before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and for most people, I think, as well, because it was they were pretty much under the radar. A Ukrainian black metal concept album based around World War One, yep. of course. Very, very second concept album for World War One this year, but two very, very different ones. Very different, yeah. Sabaton's one. It is, I guess, to me, it really helps, it really makes you visualise the horrors of war rather than the glory of the battle and all that sort of stuff. You yep. know, you listen to it and, you know, you just kind of, I don't know, it's dark, it's miserable, it's cold, it's horrible it's mm. it's death and blood and everyone dying and crying and you're like that's probably actually what war's really like yeah so, well certainly world war one yeah, yeah definitely, yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. you know and when you think of heroic antics like you think you when you think like all right you use sabaton as an example yeah yeah you get sabaton although they did the great war but you could sabaton style of music you'd be like yeah that's world war two where there's a lot more heroic antics and fist pumping in america fuck yeah and all that yeah, shit yeah. <laughs> whereas world war one you know when people tend to think of it you think of it being trench warfare and the horror yeah you do yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, I think it is one of the most incredible releases this year just couldn't make the top 20 that's just how it works unfortunately that's how it goes yep my number 5 then is The Offering and the album is called Home it was released on August 2nd 2019 the debut album from this incredibly eclectic band um, for me this the biggest thing about this was forget subgenres <coughs> forget subgenres and what we always do and all that um it, this album is a mix of everything you could ever have in rock and metal. Which might, again, make it sound like, well, that's just going to be confused as fuck. It's not. It really isn't. It's just incredibly unique because of that. Cool. Yeah. There you go. <coughs> so my fourth album of the year, last mm. year, is Pantheon MMXIX. Mm. Which sounds cooler than Pantheon 2019. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> which is by Altar. Um... New band to me this year, Siberian Black Metal. Mm. Um, don't I'm get gonna, Siberian much. I, yeah, I'm gonna say, I was going to say, you don't really get much on it. I, I'm, I'm politically incorrect, but I'm pretty much sure like you're talking the kind of like Russian sort of side of the world, aren't you, Siberia? Yeah. But I'm not sure if it's an independent country or actually part of Russia. I oh, oh, don't yeah. know. So I don't have I don't a globe, know. so... No, we didn't bring a globe. Up. Yeah, unfortunately. But it's, um, it's really, really strong, man. It is very, very black metal. It's very atmospheric black rather than... Um, retro blasting your black, mm. you, you know, it's very, very clever. It does mix stuff up an awful lot. I remember when I wrote down about it, well, it's, while it is definitely a black metal album, you, you can't escape that. But you could easily pick out other subgenres in it. You know, you can pick out stuff that's in line still, periods of death, pure straight up death metal, yeah, the kind of black gaze sort of ghost bath style, um, some technical stuff, some progressive stuff, and all that, but always like built around black metal, yep. But it's just really, really clever stuff, man. I don't know if it's always had a, a strong black metal scene or not, like that kind of part of the world. But if it has got more like this, hopefully it makes its way here. Well, you know the the uh, what would we call it now? The the eastern what the eastern block the that part of the world the um, yeah um, the Russia's your Poland and all that the cold that, cold part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The 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 cold and grey part. Yeah. <laughs> um, the 2019 at least for us has been a real eye opener for that music yeah, coming out of those countries. Music. Um, for, all, for all the problems some people have like with connected world and streaming and all that the one good thing about it is that we, you know like even in my list here we've got Korean black metal yeah. Siberian black metal you know bands from all over the world yeah uh, yeah in both of our lists yeah yeah absolutely you know, absolutely is, right just, like, accessible like that yeah instantly you know? so yeah there's a positive for it right number number four is how are we to fight the blight by the shaking sensations this one Oh man, it was released on <coughs> October 4th, 2019 and it's an instrumental hard rock album with post elements and it's like, it shouldn't be this good 
how it's just an unforgettable experience. It's utterly transcending in this regards how it touches souls, free minds, creates feelings, all without vocals. This this took me by complete surprise. I'll admit when I saw the band's name, The Shaking Sensations, I went, oh, fucking hell. I mean, I love the title, How Are We To Fight The Blight. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's a cool yeah. looking title. But it, it did scream a little... Yeah, the album title takes away from the image you get by the band name. Yep. You know, where I'm getting some sort of like... I don't know, I know it's not this at all, obviously, but in my head I'm like, I'm getting sort of like an 80s kind of... Uh, rock band like a shaking steven is kind of mixed with you can't help you know it I mean? you can't help but start, but start the thinking album that makes you instantly goes now oh, well, it's not gonna be that it's yeah and it's it's my number fourth of the year honestly amazing yeah cool top threes yes and my god did i struggle mm. to place these three in order um but my reason for one of my outrages earlier on which is rotting christ yeah heretics uh, which comes in at number three um 15th of february release like you said earlier on uh just blew me away to be honest with you i was absolutely blown away by it it made for an exciting year getting to see them at bloodstock yep. and everything like that but it's all off the back of this album where i went from being a, a fan to almost obsessive yeah uh, for a period you know yeah i uh, think that's right yeah so yeah brilliant album fucking amazing well on that front as well my number three is an album you put lower in your list yep. as well outrage uh you know i'm not outraged because i do get it um, Child Reigns The Silver Ghost it was released on March 29th um, to me it's a masterclass of melodic metal heavy in sound but huge in scope an affectionately great album the progressive passages mixed with thrilling and chilling groove is simply phenomenal um, yeah and uh, let's call it I urge everyone just to check out a couple of tracks on it yeah yep. Valley of Hope if you really want to know which one to check out <laughs> uh, number oh, two of course number two um, Procopton by Ephanima any other year, this would have been number one. Oh, it was number one on my list for many, many weeks. Yeah. Probably then... for many, many months, to be fair, until something happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I would say, like, you know, as, as close as my top 20 are in terms of what I think of them all, um, there isn't... I, I, don't, it's, I could easily have said three and then two number ones. Yep. It's very, very hard. Yeah, yeah, 100% to, agree. To pick between these two, and that's why, you know, it was. I was like that with us. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. But I think, for me, Pro Copton... To me, is an is it's a masterpiece of an album. It's been released twice yep. this year, and I think these little things show you how good this album is. Is that it came out at the beginning of the year? Um, this band have had four or five albums out before this, so they're not a brand new band. Yeah, um, but it, it made such an impact that they instantly got picked up by Napalm Records. Yep. off the back of this album, the album got pulled down from all streaming sites. Yeah, everything of course. like that. Yeah, and then it got re-released again the same year. Um, so you know for, for Napalm Records or a decent sized label that obviously felt there was enough ground in this band and this album that I believed, to, believed enough to yeah, pull it and start pull again it and push it out again yeah. you know which is something else but I, I love it it is symphonic but predominantly just good strong melodic metal it has little folk edges to it and that but they class themselves as a melodic death metal yeah. band um, it's keeping it simple though that isn't it yeah you know? but it's just yeah it's brilliant it's a brilliant brilliant album it is, it is a brilliant album, he is, is right. And another one, again, going back to an earlier point, that uh, you pushed and pushed and pushed yeah. um, early on. So yeah. that kind of made the difference there. Um, my number two, we're going all the way back to February 15th, 2019, for Forgotten Paths by Saw. Saw, Saw, however you say it. Um, expertly transitions between atmospheric black metal, Celtic folk, traditional Scottish sounds. It's an astoundingly epic album that, to me, will leave most gobsmacked. So much beauty, sadness, atmosphere and black metal heaviness all rolled into one four-track incredible release. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Not listen to it. Oh, okay. No. I have to. This is a good thing about these lists sometimes, actually. They're good guidance for me as well. I'd go, right, which ones haven't I listened to on this well, there's a couple in, on yours. There's a couple in yours that I've been yeah. meaning to and then I kind of forget. And uh, there's no yeah. better time when things are kind of quiet in January. Yeah. yeah. And then brings us to the number one and mm. my, my other outrage. What could it be? <laughs> yeah. um, so Death Atlas by Capital 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 Capital, Capital Decapitation. <laughs> it's a different band. Capital that's a political. Yeah, that's a political that's hardcore that. band. That's it. Get the White House. <laughs> but yeah, it's very late out late release. I guess 29th of November, four or five weeks. Yeah. To listen to it really before before these lists started getting written up, and I said up until this point, Pro Copton was firmly st stuck in my number one position. Yep. And I was, and I still am blown away by this album. I listen to this album daily, still now. 
was stressed at work today, so I was listening to it at work. Probably not the right thing to listen yeah. to when you're at work, especially <laughs> you want to hurt people. But um, as you said earlier on, like I wasn't expecting what, what I got from it. Mm. And that blew me away in the way that, because I didn't, I guess because I wasn't so familiar with the band, that I would, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I always imagine that when they, a band does this, that there are some hardcore supported fans. Yep. You know, a little group of them or whatever. Right. They're like, no, oh, you've gone too far. Where's my extreme grind? And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to appeal think, to a wider audience. Because I was like, a, 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 I don't even know if fans too strong a word. I, I was aware and I liked some of their material, but I didn't like all of their material. So when I listened to this, I didn't really have a mat. I had no idea of what the band would be like. But when they were very different, it didn't bother me. Yep. Like at all, it was a, it was a, it was probably a blessing. Um, but I just remember listening to this, expecting like an extreme grind album. I was expecting to like it. Yep. And it's November for Christ's sake. Everyone's singing fucking Christmas carols. And Cat of the Capitation released an album, and I'm thinking, sweet, I'll get ten tracks of like three minute long songs. And then you see the length of the album; it's nearly an hour long. And I'm like, and I see the. I remember looking at the last song, and it was like ten minute long song. And I'm yeah. Thinking, that might be a bit much. <laughs> and then they fucking play the piano in it. And I was like, Jesus, what's happening here? This is fucking brilliant. So yeah, it blew me away, man. I mean, a genuinely, um, genuinely, well, obviously my favourite album released this year, but it's made Cap of Decapitation now a band to me that are like, based on how I'm feeling about them right now, I'm ranking them up there with like bands that I absolutely adore. This band are important. This is a big band for Mel. So do they keep this sort of style? This is the sort of band that can go from playing an under, a, a, a grimy 50 people cavern under a pub with this change in their music. I'm not talking about fucking headlining festivals, but I'm talking about playing, I don't know, the electric ballroom, yep. that sort of size place. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and maybe bigger. So yeah, brilliant. Woo-hoo. Well said, Brendan's number one. There you go. My number one. Um, right, so this album, I said, and I wrote it in the review at the time, that the, I, I said this was likely to stay my top best album of the year, and it did in the end as well. When it came to doing this list, it, I put this, was the very first album I wrote. I put this in number one, and I said, let's see if I, I, anyone anyone knocks it out. Never did, never did. Even though, like I said, Saw and Child Rain and Shaking Sensations are all on the level, yeah. this is just one that I still listen to now, nine months later. It is The Six by Thormesis. Was released March 8th, 2019. Now, what's amazing about this, this is the sixth album by Thermesis. I've only, actually, at this point, only listened to the album before this, which came out a few years ago, and I also gave that 10 out of 10. Was it called The Fifth? Did no, that, no, it wasn't called The Fifth. I can't all, quite remember the name what of it. they're doing with their album cover. Uh, album no, 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 this, this was, did no. Um, it mixes modern post-metal with pagan black metal. And it's like, for me, the thing about it was, and it still happens now when I when I listen to it in order, because what I tend to do is I've cherry picked certain songs I love the most, put it in a playlist. Yeah. So every so often, but I will listen to the whole thing and just put it on in the car. And I'll remember, like, when I, I remember the feeling I had when I first listened to it, which was I was like, holy fuck, that track's spectacular. That's amazing. That's a 10 out of 10 track there. Yeah. And then it would get, do it again. And then it would do it again, leading to, and it's that all the way through to the point where the final track is is now actually my favourite track of theirs, but like, Jesus Christ, it's to me, it's, it there's no there's not a single bad thing to say about this album. It's unbelievable, unbelievably brilliant. It's why it's my number one. Absolutely had to be. They're an incredible band. I really want to see them live. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna get to see my one live. You are, yeah, yeah, Bloodstock man. Can you believe it? it's the Ron Christ thing from last year? I know that's what this yeah. year with Cal Decapitation. Yeah, Ron Christ released their album, and then they announced it for Bloodstock, and it turns out to be one of my favourite albums. I got to start finding a way to get all these bands, yeah. you know, like it's over there. Um, I'm assuming this is because Bloodstock read my top twenty and go, well, <laughs> or read my, my reviews and goes, oh, Brendan's giving Cal Decapitation ten out of ten. We best put them. <laughs> I'm sure that's it. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's our 20 albums of the year, 20 albums each. Let us know yours in the comments. Check some of them out. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Is that massively. Good, like, what, 32 yeah. unique, unique albums there? Yeah, yeah, artists. we didn't have a massive amount of crossover, no, so there's so quite a lot of unique stuff. And we, these are our best. Struggling for a bit of metal? There you go. Get on it. Easy to do. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL, as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for? <laughs>